we make it simple just so you know, you're not sitting there going, well, let's see, I got hit here, that's this muscle and that muscle and that muscle, which means I couldn't do this, but I could still do, yeah, right. In the middle of a fight, you're gonna stop and start thinking about that? I don't think so. So, let me go through human anatomy and SCA rules, and then we'll start playing with the real stuff. Starting at the top, SCA rules, anything at all that hits you in the head, it's a kill, fall down to it. That's mostly pretty reasonable. Anything above the eyes, unless you get exactly 90 degrees to the curve. If it's got a curve, it's a fairly hard bone. A lot of sharp blades hitting that is going to go sliding off. That will not kill you. You'll bleed like a stuck pig, however. Voice of experience here. Been there, done that. Second Arms Neon Queen Champion tournament. Got hit by a fellow with a pistol grip at that. Smack clean in the face. Smash the grill work on my mask and it's breaking my nose. Put about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch cut on the break of my nose. Now granted, this was like the quarterfinals. That was kind of pumped up. But I felt like I'd been slapped with a brick. I dropped to my knees. I started to fall forward and realized there was blood pouring out of my mask. So I pulled off the mask and, you know, had somebody else take a look at it because I didn't have a mirror handy. Yeah, little bitty, you know, quarter inch cut. That's like you turn on a faucet. <clears throat> now imagine a cut three or four inches long up here. There are a lot of blood vessels up in the head. Have you ever seen the movie The Duelists? There's a scene where they're fighting on horseback and one of the guys gets cut above it, up on the forehead. He's bleeding so much he literally cannot continue because the blood is just running in his eyes and he can't see what he's doing. So, that's what's going to happen most likely, anything up in the upper part of the head. It won't kill you, but it will severely restrict your vision, it's going to hurt a lot, and there's a decent chance your body's going to go into shock. Those three elements are a major reason of what makes a kill in the SCA. Pain, shock, blood loss. Now, below the eyebrows, down into the actual face, well, we have here the skull of Cadet Esteban when he was a small child. If you look at this human skull, notice the lovely funnel <coughs> with the eye sockets, same thing for the nose. You get a sharp point anywhere in this area. It's like funneling the point right into your brain. You will not survive this. You will fall down and be dead. In the mouth, maybe you'll survive depending on the angle. It's angled up at all, goes through the roof of the mouth, right into the brain cavity again. Straight back, you've got all the structures in the back of the neck to worry about, the uh, spinal column and such like. Not to mention, you get any kind of cuts inside the mouth, they're going to bleed all over the place too. You're going to be choking out your blood. You may not be dead if you are going to fall down and you're distracted. <laughs> so, pretty much anything in the head, SCA rules call it a kill. In terms of reality, that makes sense. In the neck, same thing. Any thrust to the neck, any cut to the neck is considered a kill in SCA rules. This is very reasonable. Think, you know, a large rock, say 15, 20 feet across. Drop it on your favorite freeway at 5 o'clock. Think about the resulting chaos. That's what's going to happen by putting a sword blade through your neck. You've got in the front, you've got the windpipe, the trachea. Just outboard from them, you have the carotid arteries and the jugular veins. They take the blood flow to the brain and back down again. Just back of that, you've got a whole slew of muscles here. Their main job is to hold your neck up. You cut the muscles here. You may not bleed to death, but your head is now sitting on your shoulder like this. And you're going to try to fight like that, give you a break. And if you get all the way to the back quadrant of the neck, there's the spinal column, which is a stack of small, fragile bones. And it's a stack of them. If the blade crunches through or slides between them, you've just lost connection between your brain and the rest of your body. Maybe you're not dead, you're just paralyzed for life. Still not a good situation. So, yeah, anything in the neck, pretty much call it a kid. Down into the torso. The torso is really two separate areas. Borderline here with the rib cage where the diaphragm is. Above that is mostly lungs, heart. Okay, 
pass this around. It's a little hard to see in this range. You can all so, of course. <laughs> Notice how packed the entire human torso is. There's not a whole lot of just empty space waiting for something to move in. If it's not got a lung or a heart or intestines or other organs packed in there, it's not there. It is full of stuff. And putting something sharp through any of that stuff is not going to be good. Hit the lungs. You're probably not going to die instantly, but you will have a sucking chest wound. You will you'll be doing the whole pain shock blood loss thing. And you'll probably be lying on the ground going, uh, did I hear my mommy calling? <clears throat> Rather than wanting to leap up and go another round. Heart, any of the blood vessels right around it, that's going to put you on the ground pretty much immediately. Below the rib cage, the stomach right up here, and then all the intestines, a few minor organs like the liver and the spleen and whatnot. The liver is a major blood filter. You start damaging that, it's going to screw you up. Hit the spleen, that's going to put you on the ground immediately. Stomach or intestines are not going to kill you, but you're certainly going to be in a lot of pain, very distracted, not a happy camper. For SCA rules, those are all a kill. Realistically, it hit like low torso. You've probably got enough time for a, a curse on both your houses type speech. <laughs> it's considered tacky to you know, stagger around a bit. It's considered tacky to keep fighting the you would hit the dog. So yeah, you go, oh, oh, your majesty, I tried my best, I'm dead, fall down, something like that, you know. Like I said, dramatic speeches are fine, throwing three more shots is not. Arms and legs. Arms and legs are where it gets interesting. For SCA blow calling purposes, the best thing to do is figure right where the arm joint is. A shot that hits right at the joint is going to pretty much ruin the whole arm. Anything outbound from that or angled that way from that joint, we call it an arm. But if it's angled inward from that, think of where a real sword is going to go there. It's not just going to stop here. It's going to shove in and hit the upper ends of the lungs, various blood vessels and nerves that are used to power and control the arm. So again, you're going to be on the ground. Another one a lot of people don't think about is a shot coming in here, 90 degrees. If it's got any kind of force behind it at all, it's probably going to punch in into the torso and you're killed. That's not technically in the rules, but it's a reasonable way to call it if you're looking at it as a real sword. Something else I'll mention at the same time, the concept of stapling. <coughs> you come on guard like this, your opponent hits you in the hand, Hard enough to shove the hand back into your chest. What's a real sword going to do there? Right through. Come right through, exactly. You know, if your hand's farther out, if you're doing a parry with it, you may be okay. If you're just hanging it there and getting a hit solidly. I actually once lost a tournament. The guy was doing a hand parry. I hit him on the thumb and shoved it back. I was sure I could nail him in the chest. He called it a hand. It wasn't until like three hours later we got to talking about it. We realized. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. That was a jerk. Why would you call him that? Now I realized. Technically, it was a hand. He felt it as a hand. You think about the, oh, yeah, that would have gone that way. It wouldn't have been. But yeah. So that's something else to be aware of. <coughs> By SCA rules, anything in the arm, basically from the joint of the wrist to the joint of the shoulder, ruins the whole arm. Realistically, maybe. There's a lot of muscles in here, you know, you're actually moving your hand around. You damage them, it's going to screw up how well you can control it. This is one where playability takes precedence over reality. At one time, back in the early days, it was two hits to an arm were required to disable it, or one really solid hit. But we just decided, okay, that's a more trouble than it Okay, there's one hit in this arm, and one hit in that leg, was it one or two in that leg, and combat math. Most of us dumb fighters can't do combat math in the middle of the fight. So, ending the arm. I think every kingdom, if you get hit in the hand, you can lose the hand, but not the arm. You can, if you wish, to sort of curl the hand up into a fist, keep using it for a time to open a fist, pair it, close to I've been told by guys who've done real knife fights, 
you get hit in the hand, the last thing you're going to do is stick it out there and let the guy hit it again. You're going to put it back here so it doesn't get hurt again. That's up to you. Legs. The difference between leg and groin is it gives me what's called the inguinal creeps, which you can bring your leg up to that line right there. Both sides, you can wear a fencing jacket or familiar with a fencing jacket the way it hits. Right at that crease, that pretty much defines it. Inboard of that, anywhere is torso, it's a kill. Outboard of that, anywhere is leg, it's a wound, not a kill. Two exceptions to that, the brachial artery up here in the arm and the femoral artery up here in the leg. Hitting point on on either of those arteries or getting a draw cut in either of those arteries can kill you pretty quickly. Because they're you know, not quite the size of a garden hose, but close, and you'll bleed out very, very quickly. They're about the size of your pinky. Whatever your pinky is, that's the size of your femoral artery. Good it kills about the size of the pencil. I've actually called fights where I got hit and thrust there inside the arm went, you know, that would hit the artery, I think I'm dead. Yeah, SCA rules, it's an arm, but realistically, and I like to call it that way, that's a kill. Again, with the legs, like with the arms, we're going for playability over realism, because yeah, you get, you know, pegged in the foot, or just, you know, outside of the knee of the leg, there's a decent chance you're not gonna be totally crippled and on the ground. There's a story from a period of a, uh, a fight where one of the guys got cut somewhere on the back of the leg, hamstrung it, stayed up on his feet and wanted to keep fighting. The other guy did it to his other leg. Now he's on the ground, still wanting to fight. His opponent just sort of stood back and went, no, I'm sorry, I won. And his seconds finally came out and bandaged him up and the guy on the ground was so frustrated, he ripped the bandages off and bled it. That's the one. Run out of the game. So yeah, you know, especially any kind of you know major damage to the to the legs, it can put you on the ground. Certainly put you on the ground long enough your opponent to come up and just sort of pick his spot and nail you. <clears throat> There's another story. A couple of SCA SCA people in a non-SCA context. I'll make that clear. <laughs> were doing about with sharp blade. <coughs> this is a demo somewhere. Again, non-SCA context, and we're quite that stupid quite. One of the guys got hit. It felt that he said, you know, later on he's just been like that, but he was on the ground. It hurt so much. It didn't feel like a really hard shot, but it went all the way into the meat of his leg, into the bone, hit the bone. <coughs> and so he's on the ground. They bundled him off to the hospital, and his opponent realized, like, hey, why is my boot all wet? He'd been pink in his kneecap at the same time. Hadn't even noticed it, but was still bleeding. And, you know, had a fair bit of blood in the bottom of his boot. So, yeah, leg wounds are weird. That was online somewhere. If you go to my Moon Dragon Manor website, I've got a link to the story there. So that's the basics of... SCA versus reality. So what does reality feel like? Well, we have an answer for that. There was a British forensic pathologist back in the 1970s who did some testing because he was being, you know, called in for court cases. Of, okay, you know, was this an accidental hit? Was it deliberate? You know, how, how hard do you really need to hit somebody to put a sharp blade through them? Over the course of a bunch of autopsies, he, he built this little gizmo with a kitchen knife, not that it was a spring handle scale, or spring scale handle, spring scale handle. Yes, I can talk about it. English is my first one. Anyway, and he discovered that just, you know, as part of the autopsy, he would make the initial incision with this, with this knife rather than the regular scalpel. He found that he could just set a reasonably sharp kitchen knife on skin, press it gently with one finger until it penetrates and stop it from penetrating. It takes about two kilos of pressure, about four pounds, to go through the skin. And he said that, you know, at combat speeds, it's a lot lower. The sharper the knife is, the faster it's moving, the easier it penetrates. The sharper the knife is, well, kind of obvious, yeah. The faster it's moving, it's a little less obvious, but think about it, yeah, it still works that way. And 
he said that there were some hits where he was doing a, something resembling a fight a combat scheme where the inertia of the spray was such that it didn't register before the blade was in. He also found that human skin is about the toughest thing you're going to be penetrating unless you actually hit a bone dead on. You know, the sternum, which is, you know, thick bony plate, the skull, but like hitting in the arms, in the leg, it's like, it's like hitting a stick, you know, just going to hit and roll off and go most of the time. But the muscles underneath the organs, none of them were as tough as the skin itself. And he also said that the way the skin behaves against the sharp points, like a trampoline, it will dimple in, and when the blade gets to enough force to penetrate, it's not like driving a nail where you've got to keep pushing it. Once you're through that skin, you're in there. And he said, you know, you get a couple inches of penetration even if you're stopping the instant it went through. So, how do we translate on the SCA? Well, a couple of folks in Ansteora, Donna Cray and Agnolo, built a gizmo based off of a, um, a postage scale and an embroidery tube. And this did some testing and found that thin rawhide works very well to simulate human skin. I just happen to have some, you have to get it nice and wet first. I just happen to have some thin rawhide here that's been soaking since breakfast time. And this is the modification on their gizmo, where I've got a fishing scale down here, and a pivoting arm so that the center of the pivot, or center of the the frame up here is the same distance from there to here as it is from here to there. So it's not, you know, it's not exact rocket science, but for our sloppy junior scientist measurements, it's pretty good. Now, I don't need a volunteer to come up here for this. But somebody can read numbers fairly well. What you can do is sit down about there. And read the numbers on this scale. Pivoting on this. Yeah. See that? Yes. So anyway, what Dr. Knight found was that you set a blade on the lever, on the skin, press gently, and will stop as soon as it punctures. Four and a half, five pounds. Stopping as soon as it punctured, however, that's how far it went in. And about three and a half inches. Okay, we'll reset again. At combat speeds, the only reason it stopped was because my arm hit full extension. What's the reading? Half a pound. Now, it is possible to not do that. So notice that the leather is moving, the rawhide is moving there. It's not actually puncturing. You need that little extra oomph. There is a threshold point there. So yes, you can land a light blow. The notion that there are no light blows, if you call it fearless, is not totally accurate. You know, if you're at the very end of your reach, and he, or he's moving back or something, and all you're doing is just touching the torso, you're not going to kill him. You don't need to call that blow line on So how does that translate to the SCA? Back in the when we were doing this, right folks are using foil. Probably if you've seen a foil, this is a foil. Tell me when I get the four pounds. Speaking, that much curve is gives you about four pounds of pressure. Not that I use it much anymore.
okay? Notice how much less curve there is. That base is stiffer. It doesn't take as much to get that curve or get that force. With a schlager? Gives a little bit of resistance, but not enough to be significant. 